Cervical degenerative disc disease is a very common disorder that we see in the clinic pretty regularly. It happens for most people between the ages of 40 and 60, but it can certainly happen at the other parts of your life, 20s, 30s, or 70s, 80s. It is typically marked by degeneration of the intervertebral discs in the cervical spine, which sets on a path of degeneration with both the joints in the back, the facet joints, and the uncovertebral joints, which is the actual vertebral bodies themselves where they articulate, which develops later in life as we become adults. Cervical degenerative disc disease is as much a disorder as it is a disease. And there's many factors that play into who gets it and why they get it. It's genetic to some extent, it's environmental, it's what you do for recreation. So different people, depending on how they live their lives, the stresses they take through their body, can get breakdown and can get this disorder or disease, and it's multifactorial in the end. The, the typical presenting symptoms of this disorder include neck pain, shoulder pain, and potentially pain that radiates down in the arm, depending on if there's nerve impingement associated with it. Typically, the first line of treatment includes activity modifications, oral medications, particularly anti-inflammatory medications, potentially steroids, and then very importantly, physical therapy to focus on modalities, stretching, and therapeutic exercise. Second line of treatment, if physical therapy begins to wean in effectiveness or if patients are getting worse, we do consider injection therapy. Injection therapy can be both diagnostic and therapeutic. Very obviously, we want patients to feel better, but based on where we put the medicine, we determine if we got the right spot based on their response. We wanna see a positive response to the injections in order to help clarify whether we're going down the right path. Third line of treatment is typically surgical. So when it comes to these types of disorders, the surgery is more often done from the front and you go in and you clean out the disc space and with that space that remains, more often we do fusion surgeries, but sometimes these days we also do disc replacement surgeries and it depends on the person and the amount of arthritis they have in their joints around there, whether they qualify for this or they would be a good candidate for the disc replacement. When we do the discectomies from the front, the anterior approach to the cervical spine, we approach down to the level of the spine and we identify our disc level through live x-ray in the operating room. We clean out the disc space and whenever we're left with that gap, that's where we fill the gap with either some sort of grafting and we secure it to the bones with screws and plates or combination thereof. With fusion surgery in the cervical spine, the recovery time is typically between six weeks and six months, and that's really your early term, mid term, with long term recovery taking up to a year. There are restrictions placed the first six weeks, such as wearing a cervical collar and basically taking it easy, avoiding any strenuous or impact activities. At the six week point, we typically wean out of the cervical collar and begin increasing activities, still being careful to avoid impact or any type of situations where you could get hurt because we're shooting to get to that six month point because if fusion is our goal, about 80% of the strength is typically obtained at the six month point, at which point you can go forward with safety knowing that things are healed and going the way we want them to. When performing disc replacement surgery for this type of disorder, typically the recovery is somewhat different because it's a motion maintaining type of procedure. As such, typically we'll put a brace on for a couple weeks to let the soft tissues and the muscles settle down and heal, but then we want the motion to continue because that's the whole point of the surgery. So it's a small nuance, but at the end we still want the bone to grip and grab onto that metal backing that has been specially treated to allow that to happen to maintain the best stability that we can with the implant. For folks that are suffering from neck and shoulder pain, including pain that radiates down their arm, we have several non-operative and operative options and specialists within Vell Summit Orthopedics for taking care of these folks. They can call, we have several offices through Edwards Vale and up in Summit County in Frisco to see these patients and provide care for them.